Arrays and array lists are different things. You saw that a number of slides ago where we had this lovely slide that compared and contrasted the two. Uh, but nevertheless, they are, do have some similarities and it may be useful from time to time to convert from one to another. It turns out that Java has some handy utility functions to do this for you. So if you have an array, you can convert it into an array list using one of these functions, one of these methods that we'll look at. And that can be useful because then it would allow you to use the sort um, method that, that exists for lists and for also finding maximum and minimum values and even for shuffling a list. So these are all things that we haven't looked at yet that exist in array lists. And we're going to explore them now, starting with taking a regular array and using the utility function that was mentioned to change it into an array list so that we can use some of these fancy uh, particular methods on the resulting array list. One of these methods is the asList method that is a static method of arrays. And if you were to say arrays.asList and then provide as an argument an array, what this method will do is it will take each element that's in the array and produce an array list out of it. So the result is then an array list containing all the elements that were originally in the array. You see on this slide where this is happening syntactically in the second line where we see array list string list equals new array list and then as an argument or as a parameter for the constructor we put in arrays dot as list and then in brackets array. So what this will do if you look at the line above here where we've defined a, a not an array list but a normal array it's an array of strings so string square brackets array equals and we've initialized it to contain three elements namely the string red the string green and the string blue the next line will take that and produce an array list out of it so now we have an array list of strings that contains those same three elements at index 0 we would have the string red at index 1 string green and at the index 2 string blue all the same elements that were in the original array but now it's an array list called list and of course we can always go backwards if we want we can have a method that does the opposite converts from an array list to a normal array and we see that example happening next at the bottom of the slide so we have a regular array of strings called array1 so string square brackets array1 equals new string and then in brackets list dot size so that will make an array that's initially got no elements or empty elements in it I guess of size list dot size the goal here if it's not obvious is we want to convert something that's called list to a normal array called array1 so the actual utility function to do this um, is going to use list which is the object we've created above at the top part of the slide and we say list dot to array so the to array method is a method we haven't investigated yet that goes with array lists and as an argument it accepts an array that we wish to um, populate with the elements of that list so this particular um, method invocation at the bottom of the slide actually affects array one and what it does is it goes through list element by element and copies each element into the indices of uh, array one that was defined above that's why we had to define array one size to match the size of the list which it's obvious how we did that in the preceding line so there we have uh, both directions discussed in this slide going from an array list to an array and going from an to an array from an array list back and forth and so that can be a handy thing to be able to do one motivation for wanting to do the kinds of conversions that we discussed in the previous slide is that there are some interesting and useful methods um, not directly in the ArrayList class but in something called collections. Uh, there's the ability to sort and to find the max and the min and some other things that we'll be looking at. But that particular collections class will only work on array lists. It will not work on normal arrays. So if we want to use that ability, that collections, sort, min, max, any of those useful functions, we need an array list to do it with. So if we start at the top of this slide with a normal array, a normal array of strings containing red, green, and blue, and we want to sort, uh, sorry, want to, want to find the minim, maximum value of those three items, 
then we can use Java Util Collections dot max to do that, but only with an array list. So what we can do is make a new array list out of our array so that we can use collections dot max with it. So in the previous slides you already learned how to do that. So we can say on the third line here, new array list string, because this is an array list of strings, and then as an argument, arrays dot as list and then array. So this will convert our normal string array red, green, blue into a array list containing those same elements red, green, blue. And now that we have an array list, we're at liberty to use it with collections.max to find the maximum element within that list. Then we can go ahead and do a system out print line of that final value. The example in the three lines at the bottom of the slide are the exact same example, exact same discussion. The only difference is this time you'll notice it's not collections.max, it's collections.min instead. But apart from that, it works the same way. Another useful method in the collections is collections.sort, which, as the name would imply, can sort the elements in an array list. But once again, it requires an array list. It won't work with a regular array. So if we start at the top of the slide and we have ourselves a regular array, in this case an array of integers, and those integers are 3, 5, 95, 4, 15, 34, 3, 6, 5, and we would like to sort those in ascending order, then uh, we can't do it as using collections.sort as it is. It has to be a list. So using the techniques discussed earlier, we can transform our normal array into a list array, or array list, and we do that uh, in using the same technique we saw before. Notice this time it's an array list of integers, but we need the wrapper class in here, so we have to say capital integer instead of int because it's not primitives. And uh, the array itself, however, is primitives. Those are not wrapped integers. Those are just regular primitive integers in that array. But that's okay because remember the boxing and unboxing principle, that's going to take care of that for us. And it's going to box all those elements up as a um, wrapped integer class. And then it's going to create an array list out of them, out of that array. And then uh, at the end of the day, we're going to have ourselves an array list of wrapped integers that is now compatible with collections.sort. The fourth line down is where we use that method. So java.util.collections.sort, and we pass it the list that we've made up out of the what was originally an array of primitive integers. And then we go ahead and do the system.out.println on that list, which effectively prints the result of doing a two string on the list, which, as you know, always provides us with a pair of square brackets and a comma delimited list of the values of the wrapped integers and in this context those wrapped integers become unboxed or unwrapped and show us just a list of primitive integers. Now finally we're going to demonstrate one last method in collections, the shuffle method. Um, it, this program that you see here is pretty much identical to what you saw on the previous slide with sort except instead of the sort method we're using the shuffle method. Notice that no output is shown on the slide and the reason for that is it's difficult to predict what you're going to see because shuffle is a random operation. The integers as you see them up at the top of the slide are it's extremely unlikely that we're going to wind up seeing them print that way. All we can say for sure is we're going to get an opening square bracket, a closing square bracket at the end, and a comma delimited list of integers in between in some random order. It will contain all the integers that you do see at the slot top of the slide but in very likely a much different order than they occur there and certainly not sorted. Uh, so you could try running that. Every time you run it, it's going to look different because you'll get a different random collection of those uh, integers in some other order. We're going to now revisit the implementation of my stack. Last time we did it as a normal array and this time we're going to do it as an array list. Notice that it doesn't make any difference at all to the user that's using our class because this is an implementation detail. And in fact, in the UML diagram that you see here, you'll notice that the array list is not a visible data member, uh, just as the array in the initial implementation we did before was also not a visible um, member of the class. The user only gets to see those methods that are visible, and how they get implemented is 
not of any concern to the user and they don't get to see and they don't get to know how it's implemented so they will never know whether we've used an array or an array list but certainly if we use an array list it's somewhat easier for us to do the implementation that way